Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the uh, industry briefing session. I am Peng Zhang, the facilitator for today. I'm from Western Sydney University. This session involves a presentation by the project leader, followed by a panel discussion. Now let's welcome Professor Keith Hepson, the CEO of Sustainable Built Environment National Research Center to open the event. Thank, thank you. And uh, to everyone online, uh, 19 people now, the, uh, the interest is growing. Uh, this is a fundamental part of what Sustainable Built Environment National Research Centre does uh, in disseminating uh, to industry the outcomes of our research. But importantly, before that, uh, we have an extensive national consultation process in defining uh, what the industry-focused research will look like. Um, and typically uh, that is carried out through face-to-face uh, -face workshops in Brisbane, Sydney, Melbourne and Perth, uh, and also in face-to-face -face and one-to-one um, and, uh, -one sessions with our board and major partners. In the last year and two, <laughs> uh, in the environment of COVID, we've done this uh, with an online version uh, and it's worked uh, remarkably well. One of the strong areas of interest was sustainable procurement. Uh, and uh, I'm delighted that uh, Yingbin Feng from Western Sydney University uh, has been leading uh, the first project in sustainable procurement uh, as Western Sydney uh, came on board in an early uh, engagement uh, with our centre. But now uh, with the uh, theme of research being confirmed and uh, in the go forward, Western Sydney University is a core partner of our centre. And I want to say thanks to Ying Bin for establishing the beachhead uh, for Western Sydney uh, to be part of uh, SBE. Uh, and together with uh, his team uh, and the Dean in Mike Caglio, uh, we're looking forward to a long and fruitful relationship uh, with Western Sydney University. So uh, this is uh, the initial uh, flagship from WSU. Uh, it's a very important project. Uh, it consolidates uh, research across uh, the country uh, with WA, Queensland, New South Wales and Victoria. And the, uh, the uh, research uh, universities in Griffith, Western Sydney University and RMIT uh, are all uh, well involved. So I'm really pleased to uh, launch this today. Uh, it's an important part of what we're doing and it's an important part of the next stage uh, in ensuring that uh, sustainable procurement as a theme of research going forward uh, delivers against industry needs and provides an important industry research uh, collaboration for the country. Thanks for uh, your participation in this important dissemination activity. Over to you. Thank you, Keith. Now let's welcome Associate Professor Ying Bin Fong, the project leader, to give a presentation. Thanks, Keith, for opening this event. And uh, thanks to Davina to join us and everyone to, uh, for, for your attendance. I'm very delighted to take this opportunity to present our work and uh, the outcome of, of, of our research around sustainable procurement. So the, uh, the Sustainable Procurement Project was launched in August 2020. The project has been developed with the support by uh, the Sustainable Built Environment National Research Center. Core members of um, the research center include the BGC, Government of Western Australia, uh, Queensland Government, Curtin University, Griffith University, RMIT University, and Western Sydney University. The, this project was driven by industry needs to improve sustainability outcomes through the power of purchase. So the project was developed based on the assessment of industry challenges and uh, needs. A series of um, project development workshops were conducted with various industry participants, including the government, uh, client organizations, suppliers, contractors, and industry associations in order to identify their challenges and uh, needs around sustainable procurement. Here are just uh, some, some quotes from the uh, project development workshop. So 
what are the burning issues that those trading organizations are facing in sustainable procurement? For example, how do you see through your supply chain to understand how you might have an impact? How can we provide guidance on modern slavery and how we can leverage on the current environment post the COVID-19? And some further feedback from the industry partners when we um, develop the, the uh, project proposal. So based on the extensive discussions and um, several rounds of feedback, we identified several key challenges, like the billions of dollars spent on housing, building and infrastructure projects in Australia. And there is, there is the trend to the use of products and the services that are ethically sourced, recycled, low carbon, low pollutant, and which deliver improved social outcomes. It is very challenging to be able to justify the decisions for procurement, particularly if the decisions become political and if the right tools or data are not available. It is challenging to see through supply chains and uh, transform the culture and practices in, of, of the industry. So driven by the uh, industry's desire to modify behaviors that contrib contribute to unsustainable practices, our project is dedicated to examining the key issues across system, organization and procurement processes and focuses on finding practical ways to improve environmental, social and economic sustainability outcomes in the housing, building and infrastructure sectors in Australia. We adopted uh, a um, rigorous research methodology to achieve the research a, uh, objectives. And we conducted uh, focus group discussions to collect empirical data for this research. Since the uh, sustainable procurement embraces the social dimension and involves specific stakeholders who play a uh, critical role in decision-making in the construction supply chain, we invited a total of 22 participants um, including involving the Commonwealth government, the state government, private organizations, and the industry associations. The three primary focus group discussions were conducted in March 2021 to explore three research themes, including um, understanding the value of sustainable procurement to meet organizational targets examining the role of clients, stakeholders, and suppliers in transforming industry practices in procurement for sustainability, and examining the uh, specific post-COVID-19 impacts for achieving sustainable procurement and how these impacts might be optimized. And some of the outcomes of, uh, of, the, of the research, so the benefits of um, sustainability will motivate organizations to practice sustainable procurement. However, it is acknowledged that different stakeholders may perceive different levels of benefits across uh, associated with sustainable procurement practices. And sometimes there are competing priorities that occur across these dimensions. Understanding how the stakeholders perceive the value created by sustainable procurement across different dimensions will help the organizations to understand the stakeholders' behaviors and the responses to sustainable procurement practices and initiate strategies and action plans towards achieve, achieving the sustain, uh, sustainability goals. We also look at the, the drivers, barriers, and enablers of uh, sustainable procurement. The um, drivers and um, barriers of practicing sustainable procurement were um, explored in the focus group discussions. 
understanding these drivers and barriers and enablers is fundamental for an organization to understand their external, uh, external context and internal capabilities to define their objectives and goals and formulated strategies and action plans. The motivations of um, organizations for practicing sustainable procurement are driven by government interventions, client, client requirements and uh, societal and organizational pressure. And constraints in organization process and context are the main barriers for implementing the, um, sustainable procurement practices. The successful transformation of industry practices will require synergetic efforts from government, client organizations, and uh, other stakeholders. Behavioral change requires a holistic approach and can, in, can be enhanced through collaboration and raising awareness. Organizations can consider to adopt strategies such as enable, encourage, engage, and enforce to enable behavioral change depending on their interests and the influences in sustainable procurement. Defining value for money, engaging stakeholders early, fostering communication and uh, collaboration and enabling innovation may contribute to drive cultural change. And the straight strategies for driving process change may include using tools and uh, procedures, defining goals and uh, requirements, managing performance and uh, uh, practices, and incentivizing and providing resources. And it, it is also recognized that the context plays an indirect but potentially powerful role in transforming the um, industry practices. We also looked at the COVID-19 impact on the uh, sustainable procurement practices. It is evident, evident that the COVID-19 crisis has created significant disruptions to the supply chain and uh, promoted both private and the public organizations to rethink about innovative approaches to address the disruptions. Our project ex explored the lived experiences of private and uh, public organizations and the challenges that they experienced in the in face of COVID-19 disruptions. Through our focus group discussions, we were able to gain insights on COVID-19 realities from the industry and uh, government. And we discovered several key levers, including developing um, reliable, transparent and the local supply chains, leveraging innovative tools and the digital engineering approaches, creating a uh, coalition between the government and the industry, proposal integration of modern slavery act and the procurement guidelines in and conducting multi-level risk assessment. Um, so if you, if, uh, if you can look at these slides, uh, it represents a, a, a series of actions to consider in response to COVID-19. And organizations can then make their supply chains more resilient, collaborative and networked as they recover from uh, COVID-19. A framework for enabling sustainable proc procurement was proposed to help the uh, public and uh, private organizations to gain an understanding of the holistic picture of um, sustainable procurement and align the culture, behavior, organization, and processes to sustainable procurement principles. This framework identifies the key steps that to help organizations get started with the sustainable procurement journey, the best practices that support the uh, implementation of sustainable procurement, the role of stakeholders in transforming industry practices and this responsibility that cross various levels of staff and recognize the value and impact of uh, sustainable procurement. 
Enabling sustainable procurement involves four key steps. The first step is enabling awareness, and then enabling alignment, enabling organization, and the final step is to enabling um, process. We defined the scope of each step and mapped out the key considerations and recommendations involved in each step, which are included in the industry report of the, um, of the project. And this industry report will be made available in, uh, in our uh, project website, and you can be welcome to download the report. And industry case studies were conducted in five areas, green concrete, recycled contents, modern slavery, regional participants, and marginalized group. For example, we conducted a case study around modern slavery with uh, Stockland. The best practices around the application of uh, digitalized and shared modern slavery suppliers platform in collaboration with uh, the uh, Property Council of Australia and 14 other leading property organizations. And um, uh, risk assessment is specifically designed for construction materials like uh, brickwork, carpets, joinery, skirting, soffit lining, cladding, tiles, and the windows that he for a pilot project in um, New South Wales. This table just uh, summarizes the sustainable procurement practices there that were implemented by the participating organizations in the case studies. I encourage you to download the, the research reports and the industry report that are available on our project website for the detailed outcome, the findings of, of the project. Moving forward, um, in, in this project, we are focused on helping organizations to establish and implement a comprehensive sustainable procurement system. The next challenge is to bridge the missing link for sustainability which lies in the supply chains. The uh, industry needs to not only monitor the compliance, but also build the supply chain's capabilities to respond to the increasingly higher expectation in social and environmental outcomes through collaborative practices. So our so the primary goal of our next project is to build the supply chain sustainability and the resilience through procurement and uh, collaborative practice, practices. Um, built upon the findings of uh, the, uh, our sustainable procurement project, in the new project, we seek to answer questions like, how can supply chain capabilities in sustainability and resilience be assessed? How can government or client-driven initiatives help to build sustainable and resilient supply chain capabilities and increase regional participation and indigenous engagement? And how can small and medium enterprises and their clients work collaboratively to enhance a sustainable and resilient supply chain? We expect to create values to our industry partners as well as the wider industry and community. Some of the benefits of, for, for example, and understand the characteristics of uh, their supply chain, understand and prioritize the opportunities for improvement, ensure maximum benefit is achieved from their supply chain, validate the impact of the government or client-driven initiative on supply chain characteristics, increase the participation of uh, regional and indigenous businesses in building an infrastructure projects and improve local economy resilience and the supply chain uh, and sustain long-term industry developments. To wrap up my presentation, I just would like to invite you to just watch this three minutes video, which captures the, the key information and uh, impact of um, 
uh, the project. The Sustainable Built Environment National Research Centre is a unique blend of industry, government and research partners working across Australian industry with key links internationally. I'm Davina Rooney, the CEO of the Green Building Council of Australia, and it's such a privilege to partner on the Sustainable Procurement Project. It's a really important research program to look at all the different aspects and what we need to set industry up for more sustainability within the future. Driven by industry's desire to modify behaviours that contribute to unsustainable practices, the Sustainable Procurement Project focuses on the finding the practical ways to improve the environmental, social and economic sustainability outcomes in the housing, building and infrastructure sectors in Australia. We conducted focus group discussions with the Commonwealth government, state governments, private organizations and the industry associations to explore the value of sustainable procurement. A framework for enabling sustainable procurement was proposed to help public and private organizations to gain an understanding of the holistic picture of sustainable procurement and align their culture, behavior, organization and processes to sustainable procurement principles. With the disruption of COVID-19, more than ever, businesses are looking through their supply chains to ensure they remain resilient. And this includes being environmentally and socially progressive. One of our targets is to produce greener concrete and concrete products. Three quarters of our concrete batch plants now have these reclaimers, which separate the sand and the aggregate from return concrete from construction sites. So it can be reused back into the production process. So is the water. And the cementitious slurry left behind, well, we turn that into concrete backing blocks. This means we can create the same quality products with less embodied energy and less greenhouse gas emissions than we used to make. Main roads makes payments in excess of $2 billion every year to its suppliers. Um, this is of a significant importance to all West Australians for our livelihood. Sustainable procurement can help us drive further benefits for social impact or environmental protection through our, through our spending, which include the support of local businesses and local economies, if we buy local, uh, the, the support of in, uh, Aboriginal businesses and, and people through Indigenous engagement, as well as driving the use of environmentally friendly products and, the, um, and products with lower environmental impacts. A great example of this is our use of clean and quality crushed recycled concrete. This is a product of high engineering quality, but has also given us confidence in its attributes from an environmental perspective. Now you've heard from our experts, bringing together industry, government, research houses, or full academia has never been more critical. Together, we can actually drive sustainable change and outcomes across our supply chains and fundamentally across industry. I really look forward to sharing more of the outcomes for this project with you. I would like to thank all industry partners, the uh, project steering group members, the uh, research team, and uh, the Sustainable Built Environment National Research Centre uh, for their support and the contribution in, um, in this project. And this research would not have been possible with the, without the ongoing support of the core industry, government, and research partners. Thank you very much. I'll hand over to you, Ken. Thank you, Amy. Uh, if you have uh, any questions, please put them in Q&A. We will pick up your questions later. Now we are moving to the panel discussion. I'm very pleased to introduce our panel members. We, we have Davina Rooney, the CEO of Green Building Council of Australia, GBCA. Louis Battini, the Principal Advice Sustainability Strategy and Communications from Monroe's Western Australia. Uh, Marisa Saunders, the National Commercial and Contracts Assurance Manager from Stock, uh, Stockland. 
Sharif Mohammed. Uh, he's a pro professor emeritus from Griffith University. T.J. Lee, the senior lecturer from MIT University, and also the Ying Bin Feng, associate professor from Western City University. Welcome and uh, thank you all. We all know uh, GBCA is an uh, authority on sustainable buildings and communities. Avena, uh, could you please share with us uh, initiatives and good practice that GBCA has done to promote sustainable procurement? Thank you. Fantastic. Well, thanks again for being here today. I think sessions like this uh, are so important because in every piece of research we do on sustainable procurement, everyone says what's missing and there's a there's an enormous gap translating, um, you know, leading thinking into industry practice. And often the biggest part of that gap is absolutely procurement. And there's two streams that that gap needs to be, um, you know, challenged on. One is where the academic research to back, you know, the frameworks and thinkings. And then there's the industry dissemination of that. So the Green Building Council is kind of right at the heart of the industry dissemination of this as led by the practical thinking. So, you know, within our own frameworks, we're trying to um, revise them so that they're in a position to be picked up by procurers at scale. Because when we look at the global challenges at the moment, if everything from what was discussed at Glasgow, um, you know, the pandemic, how we get our buildings better set up for health and well-being before we even get to circular systems. What we need is more sustainable projects done everywhere rather than a few done perfectly. And to do that, we actually need to get these items to scale. And when we talk about scale, that's people like Marissa running sustainable procurement frameworks through a couple of billion dollars or your other industry partners taking that lead. So we take this idea of scale very seriously. We seek to embed it and use leverage in our frameworks, whether that's partnerships with Microsoft to digitize so people can get their own data back better and back that to investor content, or whether that's actually getting down to tin tax and working with NatSpec for how they can ingest some of our rating tools and make them available to everyone in their industry standards. This is our core focus, but we're really excited to be part of research like this, where we um, actually look over the next horizon of where we need to be in the future. And a lot of that comes from the early research insights that you've brought both from your workshops, but also the rigorous process, everything from literature review all the way through detailed research and into publication. And it's bringing those systems together, marrying them up. That's what it's going to take to drive change all the way from your industry partners to the critical work that you do. Thank you, Davina. Uh, we, we know uh, Scotland has some uh, initiatives and good practice on promoting sustainable procurement, in particular, modern delivery. Marisa, would you like to share some good examples on managing modern delivery risks? Um, thanks, Pen, of course. So as uh, Yingbing mentioned earlier, we are part of a consortium with the Property Council of Australia um, through a, a working group established uh, a questionnaire with leading developers and builders in the industry. Uh, we have our suppliers, our key suppliers, as they're identified, they're scaled through, I won't go into those specifics, um, respond to the questionnaire, focusing on, on their supply chain, um, their work, um, their, you know, their work, their labour, et cetera, which we then assess. And that's been a key tool so far to date. We're taking uh, another initiative um, this year in identifying supply chain uh, transparency in one of our major projects. Uh, we've taken the facade uh, and we've just literally just kicked that off. So I can't, there's not much more I can uh, possibly add to that conversation, but that is one of our initiatives, which we will report back on in our modern slavery statement to identify the materials, you know, going through the contractor, the subcontractor, the, the direct supply, you know, following the legislation and just seeing, you know, how far can we track um, and, you know, of course, always it's about building awareness, isn't it? So in the supply chain and, you know, how people operate, how, how our suppliers, contractors, subcontractors operate in that space. So there's some of the things that we're doing, Peng. Thank you, Marisa. Uh, Louis, could you please share your opinions on 
sustainable procurement as well as any initiatives or good practice from Main Road West, Western Australia in this area. Thank you. Thank you, Peng, and, and thank you for the four. Um, and thank you for the, uh, the honour and privilege of being able to participate in this, set, in this session. Um, at, from my perspective, Main Roads has a massive opportunity to, being at, to be able to impact sustainable procurement because of our massive spend. Um, we spend billions and billions of dollars every year. So we're at, and, and that's on road infrastructure, but we can leverage that. We can leverage that into different initiatives and so forth. And we have been doing that. So we, we, our initiatives tend to be um, around recycled materials and developing um, the circuit, circuit economy within Western Australia, which, which is linked to other government goals, but also we're looking at um, Aboriginal engagement um, and by, by local as well as part of our sustainable procurement. Um, and look, often, often um, when we're, we're delivering sustainable procurement, our, the impact that you can get are, are much greater um, within our supply chains than direct within our organisation. Um, main roads, if we looked at our offices and facilities, we wouldn't be able to use much recycled content directly. It'd be papers, pens, and that sort of thing. But we look through our projects and our spend there. That's when we can get some real um, drive, some real benefit and real um, uh, leverage, some, some good outcomes in that space. And that's the same for Indigenous engagement and bi-local. The, the, the supply chains of our projects and our, our teams across the, our, our contractors across the state are much bigger, um, both up and downstream from um, where projects happen. So, um, again, that that really um, hones in the importance of sustainable procurement, um, and through that we can we can drive various outcomes. So, I've, I've mentioned broader government goals. That's definitely something we've been doing, um, being able to pick up on Commonwealth goals as well as state level goals and facilitating that through, through what we do because our core business is, is building roads and enabling travel. Um, it isn't necessarily for, for providing um, job opportunities for marginalised groups, which is what we do. It's just, um, um, but on that, it's important to be able to drive the right behaviours through the supply chain. You can't just ask, I don't think you can just ask for, for um, Indigenous jobs or, or recycled material. You've got to create a bit of a framework around that in terms of um, what you want and, and the skill level, say, for the Indigenous people. You, you want to be upskilling. Same with recycled material. It, you, you want locally based recycled material that's safe. And um, otherwise, there's uh, un you can potentially get some unintended consequences around that. And um, around that, and so both positive and negative, but you really want to be able to collaborate with the industry, collaborate with your, 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 your partners and, and, and drive, um, provide that, the specifications and guidance. And, so and we've done that. So I'll come back to what the main initiatives that we've been doing. So on a broad scale, we've um, implemented the use of the Infrastructure Sustainability Council um, uh, rating scheme. So anything, any projects above 100 million, um, will be subject to a, a sustainability rating through the planning, um, design, and, and as built phase. So that's the broad brush policy for sustainable procurement, which is helping to, to derive a, a sustainability industry within our infrastructure. And it builds up that language. It builds up um, what our, the expectation, and it helps us achieve our goals when it comes down to those those specifics, those specific um, tangibles that we um, aim to pick out. So, and then um, I'll just quickly go through the, uh, the, some of the other issues, which are um, we've driven um, the use of crushed recycled concrete. Um, we had to start from scratch and work with industry, um, we, the recycling industry, as well as our construction industry to, to get a product that was acceptable to everyone. And we've been um, driving an Aboriginal engagement. Um, and probably the key two other, uh, just before you, uh, you stop me, Peng, um, there's two things that I've, Think are important to all this. It's collaboration, um, both across agency and within the industry, but also the culture. You've got to be driving that culture and that comes with collaboration as well. Cheers. Thank you, Rui. Uh, now let's uh, ask some questions for the research team. 
Um, Sheriff, could you please share your opinion about educating the next generation and uh, capability building aspects of adopting sustainable procurement or sustainability? Thank you. Thank you, Ping. Um, basically, when it comes to educating, um, you know, the future generations of engineers and builders and in the university environment, we emphasize uh, um, the adaptation of sustainability in all aspects, not just in procurement, but in design, uh, in, in material selection, etc. I think it's very important to uh, link uh, what we do at the in the university environment to what has been said earlier by both Marissa and Louis in terms of um, getting the students to appreciate what collaboration mean, culture, things that probably that we don't spend so much time in traditional way of teaching to uh, get the st students to appreciate that these what so-called soft element can really make a difference in, in, uh, in, in, um, in, in succeeding and achieving goals. Um, one of the things that we emphasize at Griffith, which is basically understanding how students would be able in scenario environment to map out risk across the supply portfolio. So one of the things that I teach at the postgraduate or used to teach at the postgraduate level is understanding of that when you look at a supply chain, and I heard earlier that people were talking about transparency and, and, and uh, collaboration and, and so forth. I think what is really uh, uh, important for uh, us to, as academics, to uh, uh, emphasize or reinforce in, um, in students' thinking all the way is that Every decision they make, there is some certain element of element, element of risk that could be objective or subjective, and basically we endeavor to make sure that they um, understand that by taking the right decision to minimize the risk, that will pay off on, on the long term, whether it's a project level or organizational level. Thank you. Thank you, Sherry. Uh, TG. What does the research tell us about the roles of stakeholders in transforming sustainable procurement practices? Thanks, Ben, for the question. And uh, it's my honor to be here. Uh, we learned a lot from the research uh, that uh, what we need to do in terms of transforming uh, the industry practices. Um, I know Yingbing has presented the model that we developed uh, uh, that has four elements for industry practice transformation. Uh, which includes behavior, culture, process, and context. And Louis, you mentioned some, um, something about communication, collaboration, culture as well. I'd like to touch on two things, two, two things as part of these four elements. Number one is value for money. How we define value for money would, def would drive the supply chain in terms of how they behave in terms of how they bid, how they prepare, how they procure, and how they execute. So it's important for us to make sure sustainable, sustainability be part of the equation. Uh, so as clients, right, we got to be uh, very um, um, intentional, very careful when it comes to defining value for money. That is where we get for the money that we spend. The second thing I'd like to touch on is how we incentivize behavior, right? And how we can provide resources for, um, to drive behavior as well. So the supply chain participants, they are, of course they are in for financial benefits, right? But also they are not just after the bottom line. They are after good reputation. They are after positive publicity as well. How we incentivize, how, how we provide resources to promote proper behavior, if you will, uh, would um, define or would promote um, the kind of behavior that we want. So two things, as I said, value for money, how we define it, and how we incentivize as well. Thank you. Thank you, TG. Uh, next question for the project leader. Uh, Ying Bin, uh, from your presentation, there are a lot of intriguing findings. We are very interested to know if you have any plans for next steps. I will just put you in, in short because now I'm working on uh, what's in the plan. So basically there are two aspects that uh, we are looking at. The one aspect is the, about to uh, deliver, to develop a practical guide. Um, and uh, 
developed some training materials to uh, operationalize the finding that the case that what are the key considerations, the recommendations, the best practices, the examples, uh, and we're going to put the put those together and uh, as the as the practical guide. And the second aspect is about uh, as I mentioned in my presentation, we are currently uh, we just started a, a new project in the field of the sustainable procurement. And this new project is built upon the findings of the, um, the previous project. And, uh, and we will continue the research journey in sustainable procurement and uh, focus on looking at the supply chain, how to build uh, the uh, supply chain uh, resilience and the sust uh, sustainability capabilities. And um, I hope to uh, keep everyone updated about how we're going to the, 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 the fundings of our new project as far as the, how we're going with the, um, the uh, previous project. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. Uh, we have received a couple of questions from audience. One of the questions is, uh, how do you link Green Star Rating to September procurement? Davina, do you have some comments on this question? Yeah, this is a great question. To be honest, it's something that we're uh, doing a little bit of work on you know, with Marissa's team a little bit slowly, but, you know, all making progress as these frameworks come to life. So there's a couple of ways that we link sustainability procurement into Green Star. So the first is um, we have specific sustainable procurement credits across all the rating tools. So, you know, for existing buildings, one of the best things you can do is get green cleaning, you know, in there, look at, and we're actually expanding that in our new future focus series to pick up capital expenditure that's frequently done by those buildings. We have um, sustainable procurement requirements um, around partnering, you know, across a range of social metrics, but also mandating the procurement um, by its definition of a really large number of environmental aspects. So, I'd say there's a few different aspects of it. The first thing that we're actually doing is implementing credits for sustainable procurement. The second thing that we're doing is setting up the frameworks so that they can be picked up by builders and contractors at scale. So if you do the top 10 minimum things plus net zero buildings, you immediately get a rating. And so we're working with more and more social infrastructure partners to say, don't do a rating, let's work on what your procurement um, looks like. Let's look at your specifications and embed this on every project and then work out on the ones that we third party verify so you've got confidence that you're getting what you paid for. And then the third aspect is we're updating some of the materials frameworks with, you know, so the Australian standard for um, timber was rewritten around Green Star. Gecker's standards are being rewritten and released around the new version of Green Star. So it's seeking to have a larger supply chain influence than only the projects we work on. So when we talk about changing things at scale and embedding at procurement, we've got three different focus areas that we're after, because if we need to change the market, we need to change the ecosystem. Thank you. Thank you, Dorena. Uh, let's move to the next question. The next question is, how do you address modern delivery risk of overseas suppliers? Marisa, would you like to share your comments on this question? Thank you, Peng, and thank you very much for that question. It, um, it, it is a hot topic. What we do, um, so technically what we do, we pass the risk on to our contractor and, and you know, ask them to check their supply chain. You know, at the moment, the legislation doesn't expect us to drill right down into, um, down deep into the supply chain. It expects us to keep it at the subcontractor and direct supplier level. When we do go overseas, obviously we 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 partner with other um, organisations that you know you know keep an eye out on what is happening in in you know, mainly labour practices around the world, and that's how we check at the moment. In a past life at Rio Tinto, I'd be on an aeroplane. You know, we would check, um, we do spot checks. We do have a system in our asset management portfolio uh, for our cleaners, securities and, and other high risk supply chain. Um, we do spot checks 
in that in that space. In the built form space, again, we're heavily reliant on our direct contractors and their subbies and suppliers at this stage until we can travel more. But I think that's why your facade project, looking at yes. critical materials, which is, you know, which is the one in the top three areas that we know as substantive risk in construction. I think that's why it's so appropriate you're running that deep dive approach too, Marissa. Yeah, so that is important. So and, and it, it can do those activities as well. But again, we're very reliant on what our contractor and their subcontractors suppliers. But we will, you know, again, it's very new. I'm hoping that we can call on documents, you know, for them to evidence what they say. Like back what you say is uh, going to be very, very important in that you know, in that investigation. Yeah, okay, good. Thank you. Thank you, Marisa. Uh, due to the time limits, we don't have enough time to answer all the questions. However, you are encouraged to email your questions to the project leader, Associate Professor Yin Bin Feng. Now, uh, I would like to invite Davina to give some closing remarks and uh, wrap up the event. Fantastic. Well, from my perspective, I would absolutely just to note what a privilege it's been to invo be involved in this. Uh, why is this project important? Because it's a critical challenge at the critical time with the critical partners. So, you know, that's why this has been so successful going into its second phase. We still have a lot more to do. Um, I'd like to give particular credit to the team that I've had the privilege of working with, you know, everyone from Keith, Yingbin, TJ, Sharif, Peng. This is unusual. You know, um, I've been involved in, you know, and the Green Building Council is involved in a lot of um, research participation, but I, I, I actually think that you're getting really deep engagement here and this is what change is all about, you know, and whether that's from, you know, noting that different, um, you know, time poor industry representatives really love a short snappy PowerPoint with some highlighted discussion questions to drive um, change as much as they like having a, an 180 page pack to have in their back pocket for relevant detail. And that's a different way of communicating because, you know, the world you come from absolutely spends a lot of its time on detailed peer reviewed work. And it's so critical that that underpins it. But the way that the team's been able to change their communication style for the different audiences and even evolve it over the projects team is exceptional. How responsive you've been to the different needs of your different stakeholders and the way, particularly in the second project phase, how you're taking your case studies and really using them to drive the optimal research outcome. It's such a privilege to be involved at this stage. So much more to do. You know, let's not sugarcoat it. There's, there's an enormous opportunity here, a black hole of opportunity here because there's so much to be done in this space. So I look forward to lots of um, long-term collaboration. Thanks so much. Um, we will, we're will we going to finish this session on time and actually give you three critical minutes back in your day, which doesn't sound like much, but it may mean that you get to drink a glass of water between your next Zoom catch-up. So we look forward to seeing you online for a lot more of these collaborations. Thanks so much for having us. And you're going to see more phenomenal research coming out of this team and more change driven by these industry partners.